Thank you. Thank you. The command, commandant, prison staff, training college, my sister Wanini Kireri, the organizing committee of this uh, training, senior prison officers present, the very able facilitators, distinguished participants, I would say distinguished, boy mm -hmm. <laughs> And uh, allow me to say equally, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to say this on this particular day. I am delighted to join you during this inaugural Men Empowerment Workshop. I join you today to address an emerging, troublesome, and quite challenging gender-based problem. In summary, disempowered men is the worst, or are the worst challenge in the growing list of societal problems. Empowerment can be viewed as a process of making people stronger and more confident in their abilities, especially in claiming their rights and controlling their lives. Unfortunately, the state of men empowerment in Kenya generally, and now in prisons department in particular, is in great want. I confess, I never imagined that during my generation, we could arrive at this point in our gender relations journey. Things look so obvious and so clear that thinking about men being empowered was not in any of our plans. We have to admit that for the last 30 years, when the girl child hands the women were given limelight everywhere, men were ignored in matters of empowerment. In some quarters, when the issue of men empowerment is mentioned, it is laughed at, frowned at, shrugged off, and dismissed as idle talk. However, looking at the def definition above, the picture becomes a clear concern. Good people, from a traditional perspective, men were expected to play the following role. Protect, provide, give direction to the families that they shared or fostered. Let us remember and take note that in our society, the process of succession, passing the baton from generation to generation, was clear cut and supported by communal events and age set activities. These have largely disappeared and replaced if at all, by individual parenting initiatives or church-based programs that suffer from poor foundations. As the society has developed and modernized, these roles have increasingly been shared between the genders. To some extent, the erosion of the boundaries between gender roles has brought confusion and hence the clamor for men empowerment. Some of us argue that there is no need for men empowerment as majority of men are still effectively performing their roles. And those people are right, just as the ones with a contrary opinion are equally right. Until the jury comes back based on empirical research 
these arguments will continue. And that is healthy. However, there are obvious signs that the boy child or the men are currently in distress from the following. Inability to live up to the new societal expectations and the most frequent emergency demands of the empowered woman, especially at the family level. This situation may have come about due to singular focus that has been trained upon the girl child through affirmative action for the last three decades. Women have caught up with the men and in some areas overtaken men and are performing common roles impressively. Although for most men, this is what has sounded the alarm bells. Yet, in terms of societal benefit, the new competition, if gender is minimized, is a great opportunity for progress. Perhaps where we go wrong is when we bring in the comparison narrative of women doing better than men. To make the gender-based empowerment a focus of human development is, in my view, a grave mistake. This argument has increasingly created a basis for re relational tension between genders, especially in families where men are belittled and sidelined by the empowered woman. Look at what's happening in the developed world, where affirmative action began. The push to empower women economically was a great success, but it, it has had a huge negative impact on family ties. Slowly, this is cropping in various settings in our society. Perhaps we should ask ourselves some questions. Where did men lose the age <clears throat> or start failing in performing their duties? When did we start <clears throat> embracing the stereotype statements? <clears throat> So this argument has increasingly created a basis for re 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 relational tension between genders, especially in families where men are belittled and sidelined by the empowered woman. Look at what's happening in the developed world. Where affirmative action began, the push to empower women economically was a great success, but it has had a huge negative impact on family ties. Slowly, this is creeping up <coughs> in various settings in our society. Perhaps we should ask ourselves some questions. One, where did men lose the aid or start failing in performing their duties? <coughs> Two, when did we start embracing the stereotype statement like women are better in communication than men. Some of the questions that are when we are in this forum, we need to ask ourselves, men, <laughs> where did we lose the age? <clears throat> or start failing to, in performing our duties? Where did we start embracing the stereotype statement like women are better in communication than men? <clears throat> women are better in managers than men? When you educate such like things, like when you educate the girl child, hence you educate a woman, and you're educating a community. What of you, men? What does it mean to educate you? Does it mean nothing? These are some of the questions that you need to ponder, because these are things that have been used to, uh, uh, to disadvantage the boy child. And some of us, in our meetings, in forums where we've been, we've been saying this when we're addressing girls. 
that we educate a, a girl child, hence a woman, you're educating a community. So the other agenda, even if you educate him, he doesn't have any value. Some, these are some of the things that we need to look into. It, these statements are meant to pass a message. But for some time now, they have damaged the boy child's thinking to the extent that the boy child's self-esteem and status have been severely indented. The opponents of this thinking argue that this is nothing so special. I mean, that there is nothing so special about the girl child or a woman. This amounts to starting a gender war. No one can win a gender war. To some extent, this could also explain why men are running away from their responsibilities. The argument now is, uh, the argument now is that let the women do it because they have been empowered at the expense of men. And the men feel justified to take a back seat and relax. This leads me to another set of questions. Against this setting, should we consider starting another gender-based development program to roll out an affirmative action for the boy child? Where will this cycle end? And what good will that do to our society? I would like to say that most times we create situations that mean well. However, when they are subjected to cost-benefit analysis, the benefits pale in comparison to the costs. Such a situation is the single gender empowerment instead of a holistic approach where both are included. We are meeting here today as prisons family to identify a gap in the abilities of young, our young men which is not addressed, which if not addressed, we shall have a generation of young men who are rudderless. I want to farm This, I believe, is what is calling for men empowerment. As I said earlier, the patriarchal society puts a lot of responsibility to the boy child. However, at the present time, they are not guided on what is expected of them. They lack the skills to handle situations, leading them to make very irresponsible and often costly life decisions. They are projecting, they are being neglected and denied their rights through vices, which are increasingly in frequency and intensity. Matters of rape, incest, and doing many other things by the boy child. As we go through this workshop, let us realize that it is us, the men, who will pull ourselves out of the mess we have sunk ourselves into. From my vantage position, it is necessary to make the empowerment of youth, both men and women, with their diversity of needs, within focus of common basis for development. I would like to say that every generation will have new challenges in development. And the models that will work in future have to balance both genders. Yes, we have empowered the girl child, but we can educate the society to acknowledge that the boy child has their own roles to play, given an open field to compete and cooperate between and among the genders. It is now clear to me that empowering one gender and expecting a balance and smooth functioning of gender relations is just but a dream. A comprehensive and a holistic approach that addresses all gender issues is more effective and sustainable. The men in the house have posed some questions which I believe most will be answered through your discussions. I would like to wish you the best as you go through the workshop. I'll just throw the works in the fire. 
I believe that will be carried in your deliberations to achieve the best. Fellow gentlemen, as I go towards conclusion, allow me, without any reservations, to thank and salute my sister, Madam Kireri, for enabling this forum to convene and for care. <laughs> because other personalities, other individuals, for agenda would have said, why should I if we go a match here, I want to because they would offer me, would uh, they would offer her um, a competition? So we need to give her some hearty claps, please. <laughs> so with these remarks, I wish to declare this workshop officially open. Mungwa Awabariki Sana.